Jesse Krebs here and I'm going to be showing how to do a sheer lash and a lot of times you'll see online the videos and things they only do two poles but you can actually do three or even four poles so I'm going to show it with four poles today and this is a really good lash for making all kinds of things but mostly it's for tying, line, tying poles together that are in line so they're not trying to cross each other but you can make a good tri tripod or quad pod or a bipod if you want to so what the first step of that is to find good poles so I've got four poles you want to try to find them as straight as possible and at the top try to make sure there's no like stobs or branches sticking off at the very top sometimes I like them further down because I can use them to hang things right so often what I'll make with this is maybe a smoker I'm gonna smoke a lot of meat that I've caught maybe I've caught some large game and I can put several layers of meat and make it into a smoker or I commonly use it for putting over top of a fire to dry out gear, dry out material, so I can hang a bunch of stuff off it when I don't have any trees conveniently nearby. I can make my own tree, sort of, okay? So now let's see how to do the actual lash. So first I'm gonna line all these up on the bottom. So I'm gonna try to get them in a flat plane and line them up. And this is, of course, if I want a centered tripod. If I made one of these sticks much shorter, I could shorten it like so. And then when I'm done, one side's gonna be leaned over to the side. So there'll be more pressure on that shorter stake. It'd be better to be a thicker one. And the other ones will stick out longer. So maybe I wanna make a framed A-frame, right? So I want two shorter sticks in the front with one long one going back. So how I tie this will determine what the final shape is gonna be, okay? So in this case, I'm gonna line them all up at the bottom, lay them back. And then I'm gonna, I've got a piece of wood here to lay them across and that's just to make sure that it keeps up off the ground as I'm tying this it's a little tricky to tie if it's not uh, up off the ground a few inches so I've got that here I've got these all fairly lined up and now we're gonna come on in and tie this, this puppy up there are many many different ways to start this I can use a timber hitch clove hitch um, a bowline, a Canadian jam, I mean there's a bunch of different knots I can do here. What I'm going to do because I've been teaching this knot fairly frequently and it's a pretty common one for people to know is the bowline. And I'm going to do a bowline a little different than, differently than you may have seen it before. I'm going to grab, making an overhand, and grab a bite of the body which actually makes a running loop. And then I'm going to take the, the tail, the tag end, place it inside that running loop and then collapse the running loop. And I'm going to make this one reasonably small. So I've made a bowline, bowline, and then I'm gonna just make this into one that is uh, slipped. Just by taking a bite of the body and passing it through and basically turning the whole loop kind of inside out. And so basically I've taken that bowline and made it into a slip loop. And I'm just gonna slide that over one of my ends. So this should grip really, really well, but will also come off easily, undone easily when I want it to. So now because it's tightening, pulling underneath, I'm gonna wrap underneath first. And a wrap is, I consider something to be going around like wood or um, a bracket of some kind, whatever, that would be a wrap. And I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do just, we'll go two, two wraps this time. You can do three wraps, four wraps, however many you like. Um, at Sears School, we were taught however many wraps you do, that's how many fraps you do with an F. And a, a frap is different from a wrap because after you go around the wood or whatever you're doing, now you're gonna go around just the line is your frap. And this is where it's a little difficult and where it's much easier when it's up off the ground. So now I came around, I did two full wraps. Now I'm gonna come around, I'm gonna go around the wraps themselves. So I came up on this side of the stick, now I'm gonna go down on the other. And sometimes you can use a a stick or something or I can manipulate these to make sure I can get around it. I'm just gonna bring that through and then I'm gonna squeeze that tight. I want this whole lashing to be reasonably tight. If I get it too tight it might be hard to separate the sticks afterwards but overall it's nice to have it reasonably snug so you know it's gonna be snug together and making sure all this stays nice and dressed up. So there's one complete one and now I've got one and a half. I'm gonna come around this again and there's my two complete fraps around this one. Sweet, so that one's snugged up pretty good to go. I'm gonna come back underneath and now I'm gonna go for the second stick, going between the second and the third one, getting a frap in there, which is a little tricky with, with wood. So I'm gonna come around here, underneath, just lift the whole puppy up. 
And I'm going to come back here to actually get underneath and get between these two. So I've started my second frap between these two. Come in between here, work them in there. Urgh, got a big knot there, there we go. Pull them tight. Come back up again. So I've got one frap there. Snug them down. It's my second frap. Pull that tight, yes. Okay, so now I've got those two. So first frap, second frap. Now I'm gonna go for the third ones. Again, I can manipulate the sticks to get in between there. So I'm gonna come around. I'm just gonna put a foot on there and really crank them down. So that's tightened up that second frap. Coming around the end. And usually four is the most I would do four sticks in a shear lash. The reason for that is that you can see how it starts to want to bow and curve. So if I wanted to add more to this, let's say to make a teepee, I might do a, a tripod or a quad pod like this. And then after I stand it up, I would simply add in more sticks more line, more logs or whatever. So now I've got my two fraps there as well. So one, two, three fraps in between all four of the four wraps or the four sticks. And so now I'm gonna finish this off. I can use a clove hitch, which is usually the easiest. You can think of it also as a um, couple of half hitches, just the way they're layered. So I come around, make an X. You can see my X right there. Then around one more time, I pinch the X. And you'll notice, and I'm pinching that to keep the tension, you'll notice this side lifts up. So now as that came around, I'm simply going to take this back underneath that line and tighten that down. I think I did more like a half hitch there. But I'm going to wrap them again. And this one works on friction, and if I wanted to, I could just put a bite through instead right which would be looking more like this so I can again take it apart easily if I want to if this is a temporary thing at a campsite I'm at and I want, I'm gonna want to take it apart quickly I could just do this um, I often with this will want to pull it all the way through though because I could use this line that's hanging down to let's say hang a pot over the fire or something else so I'm gonna go all the way through with it okay now we're gonna stand up now I can stand this whole assembly up and separate out the ends the bottoms of my poles and then I've got a nice quad pod, which this one, even though they're flimsy sticks, can actually support my weight just because I'm evening my weight out between all of them. So I can use a string now to hang a pot over the fire if I want to. Again, if I had made one of these much shorter, I could make it more into like an A-frame type. I could use 20-foot trees that I found that might be yay big at the bottom, but 20 feet long. Chop those off, take off the sides, and I could do a tripod and then add in more poles to make a big teepee with maybe a 20, 30 foot diameter base. So this is a really useful knot to know for a lot of different purposes. So now let's move on to another one.